So hi everyone, I'm Todd Blankenbeckler and also on the webinar today is Alex Boulay and welcome to our third Thursday of the month, uh, Easy Rx user webinar. We do these every month um, and we follow a general format, but we pretty flexible, but uh, we usually just walk through you a few things that are, are new to the application in the last month. A few people submitted questions, so we're going to run through those questions and then we're going to have an open, uh, just open forum on QA and, uh, you know, stay as long as uh, we need to. So I'm going to talk about um, kind of here's what I'm going to run through on the webinar. Uh, three items under what's new that I want to introduce real time cloud nine integration for those that are uh, cloud nine customers, uh, our new custom printed label, marking a case as a refinement. Uh, I've got five or six submitted questions I wanted to answer, and then we'll just do open uh, QA and um, take it from there. Uh, logistically, if you could make sure that you stay muted, if you're, um, no, it sounds like everyone is muted. If you have a question, you can unmute to ask the question or put it in the chat window, whichever method you prefer. Uh, Alex is going to be keeping an eye on the chat, uh, but if you just want to ask the question, um, fire away. All right, so let's jump in and talk about these three items that are new. And uh, so I want to jump in and first talk about uh, real-time Cloud9 integration, if I can get my... Um, monitor to cooperate. Okay, so for customers either on this webinar or for those that listen to the webinar that are Cloud9 customers, we have had an integration with Cloud9 for uh, two, maybe three years now. We have a number of practices that have integrated Cloud9 with their EZRX account. Up until uh, this uh, last couple of weeks, and into the next week as we get it enabled, the integration with Cloud9 ran one time a day at night. And so we would sync data from Cloud9 to EZRX or EZRX back to Cloud9 at night. Uh, I think we ran at like three in the morning. And so the data that would sync, synced at night. And so um, if you added a new patient today and you wanted to go create an EZRX prescription for that patient, today, uh, you had to wait till tomorrow. When you made your comment entries, or excuse me, when you submitted a case and you wanted the comment entries to go back to Cloud9, that happened at night. And we're now moving to what is called real-time Cloud9 integration, which means data between EZRX and Cloud9 will sync during the day as it happens or real-time. For example, uh, whenever a case is submitted for a patient, let me make this a little bigger. Right now, the integration is, has written a treatment card comment in Cloud9 when a case is submitted, unsubmitted, delivered, undelivered. And we recently added when a case uh, is marked as received back from the lab. Um, now those comments in the Cloud9 treatment card are gonna occur during the day. You know, you don't have to do anything to turn this on. If you are a Cloud9 customer, we're doing it. We're enabling it behind the scenes. So that's going to happen now real time during the day. It's very hard to demo that. That's why I brought up the knowledge base article. And also, once real time is enabled on your account, when you go to the, excuse me, the Cloud9 patient list, you're going to see a new option, check for new patients. And so let's say that you look for a patient in your existing list. And like I'm going to search for uh, Wainwright and Wainwright does not show up in my list of existing patients. I can go up and click check for new patients. And I can type <clears throat> Wayne and <clears throat> look up James Wainwright, who I added today that's pulling real time from your Cloud9 database. And now I can jump right in and go create the patient record. 
So in those situations where you add the patient today in cloud nine, you're now going to be able to link, look up and find that patient and add them to your EZRX account. We're going to be expanding this real-time integration. Right now it pulls patient information and it writes comment entries. Uh, the next version, we're going to pull the appointment information automatically. So um, as patients are updated and you look up a patient, we'll pull in the most recent appointment information. You don't have to do anything to get this enabled on your system. If you have Cloud9, um, we're doing it behind the scenes. So pretty exciting change for our Cloud9 customer. The second uh, item I wanted to talk about is one of those features that uh, customers use more than we, uh, we really expected when we released the feature. And that is, I'm gonna go view a prescription. And we've had this print label button where you can go and print a label and I don't have a label printer, so it's formatted to a full page. But we've had the ability to print a label, <clears throat> and we conveniently did not give you any, you know, I make that a little bigger. We didn't give you any customization of this label. So you got what we printed, which was the barcode, patient name, um, prescription ID, and I think maybe the lab it's going to. Oh, here's the easier way. Barcode, prescription ID, practice name, patient, or doctor name, patient, and then the lab that it's going to. So what we've had over the last you know, year or so, maybe longer, is people wanting to customize this label. So we recently released a new menu option to customize the label that prints, uh, if I can find the option. Um, the wrong thing. It's under, it's under practice, print label setup. And what we did is we took what people had requested over the years and we added those as available fields. So the fields on the left are available. The fields on the right are what are on your label. This is the default configuration. For example, if you don't care to have the practice name print on your label because you know who your practice is. You can take practice label or practice name off, but maybe you want the patient's appointment date, uh, date of birth, and date needed. So you just drag that over. And then we've added some different label sizes. Um, so I'm gonna make this a larger label and then you can do some formatting. We tried to keep it simple. So we didn't do the interface where you can drag the fields around. We just sort of auto position everything based on your preferences. You can change the fonts. Again, it'll apply to all of the items. So we've got our default size one by two and a half and then 2.4. So it's going to do something like that. So it just uh, gives you the flexibility to control your uh, label printing. If you're using that a lot, it applies globally. There's not, you know, each user cannot have their own label setting. It's just a global label setting. <clears throat> yeah, it looks, you know, <clears throat> so that's the layout that was on my custom label setup. All right, uh, so that was new, I think, since the last time we did a webinar, which was you know, a month ago. Uh, something else that we recently added, and this is really responding to, you know, everyone, feels like everyone, certainly a lot of EZRX customers are doing uh, in-house clear aligner, are working with their lab to do their aligners. Uh, so we see a lot of different aligner um, prescriptions being created in EZRX. And so what we haven't had is you submit an aligner prescription and 12 months into it, six months, whatever, patient has, been, has not been wearing the aligner, aligners, or for whatever reason, you need to do a refinement case. 
And we really didn't have a way to specifically say this is a refinement case, which is really important for the lab receiving the case to know. Uh, we've had some confusion where um, labs receiving a refinement case thought it was a, a new case or a duplicate case. Some cases we we saw duplicate. We saw that the cases were considered duplicates and they weren't being manufactured. So we've added a new option where on a, on a aligner for, uh, case, um, I'll come back to the top question. Let me finish this. Um, I'm going to request refinement. And that's going to actually note this case as a refinement case. So when the lab receives it, it's going to note it as a refinement. So let me go through and, you know, I'll go up and, um, <clears throat> you know, maybe tweak what teeth to align um, just, just to create something different on the prescription, fill out some of this information, save that work, and I'm going to submit it if I can get all the information filled out properly. You probably would not send plaster for an alignment case. Our, our data validation worked. <laughs> And now when you look at this prescription, you see there is a note just below the prescription workspace that this is a refinement prescription. And then we added a link where you could easily jump over to the original. So you can jump back to the original and then go back to the refinement case. You know, sort of a little big thing, but I think very important for those <clears throat> practices doing in house aligner are sending alignment or you know aligner prescriptions to their lab and they need to do refinement. Uh, back to the chat window, there was a question when I was going through cloud nine. Um, does TOPS have this feature? Um, the TOPS integration is different in that it pulls data, I think, from the data because your data is local to cloud nine. It's not in the cloud or it's local to your system. It's not in the cloud like cloud nine. So what data that cloud nine is passing over to um, EZRX would be real time is how I would answer that. Probably a little bit of a question for top since they developed the integration, but since your data is local, I would think it's real time. Okay, let me um, keep trucking along. And I'm going to start walking through some of the questions that were submitted. Um, one of those is just um, how to personalize IPR instructions. And if you're on the call and you ask this question, I'll answer where we do IPR now. And then maybe if there's something else you're thinking, um, you can chime in. But there are two places where we actually have specific support for IPR. And I just randomly pick a, a prescription. One, if you're on the indirect bonding prescription page and you need to do an indirect bonding prescription, there is an option here, activate IPR, and then you pick where you wanna do the IPR, right? So that's option one of where do you enter IPR, where we've actually developed a feature um, to do IPR. The other area, get rid of all these brackets, is on the aligner prescription. Again, I can do three to three, and then click to activate IPR. Again, you can pick where you wanna put IPR by clicking the arrow. So those are two areas where we specifically support IPR and it shows visually on the prescription um, as you can see. And that's true if you do an indirect bonding, I'll just... So there's the IPR there. Now under resets, 
Um, you can also activate IPR under resets. And maybe this is an area that you were thinking. So in this case, it's not an indirect bonding prescription or an aligner prescription, but uh, just going to the resets missing tab, you can also note IPR. And hopefully if you submitted that question and you're on the call that answered your question, if not chime in, or if you listen to this, feel free to email. And while I'm on here, I will note that we recently added we really recently tweaked this tab. It used to just say resets, but we changed the label to resets missing. And now you can go in and mark missing teeth. And you'll notice that they gray out on the prescription workspace. Obviously the lab's probably gonna notice if the teeth are missing, but uh, you can note them clearly when you are submitting a prescription. And just to make sure uh, we're clear, it isn't a requirement to do IPR and mark missing teeth. They're just done from the resets missing panel uh, tab below the prescription workspace. Okay, uh, I'm going to move on to the next question. And this may um, be good information. A couple of the requests that we got or questions was just how to use easy rx the most efficiently and i'm going to go through a couple options but the one option our question that we had specifically was how to customize part names including changing where they appear in the favorites list so i'm going to answer the first part of that how to customize part names i'm going to go up to account settings and if you have the in, if you're running a premium subscription, then you have in-house lab or the labs that you send your cases to can make these changes because they have the same interface as I'm showing here. But I'm going to go to parts and there is an option, enable alternate part naming. And so one way to customize part names we came up with is let's give customers a different way or a way to name the part differently than what we've called the part. And we got our part names from, you know, customers over the years, right? So some they're somewhat standard, but they're not totally standard. And so to customize a part name, you can enable alternate part naming. And then when you edit a prescription, I mean, a part, you get a field alternate part name. And obviously, as you would expect, if I go turn off alternate part naming, then that field does not show. So you wanna make sure that that slider is enable alternate part naming. You can go, and then I'm just gonna call anchor clasp a hook clasp because that's what we call it at our, um, practice. So now when I'm working a prescription or creating a prescription, I'll clear this. I can search anchor and you'll see there's the standard name anchor class and the alternate part name is in brackets hook class. So that means I can go and type in hook clasp and there's the alternate name and then there's the standard name. We show both in the list um, and then from here obviously you can just drag this up. So that's one way to customize your parts list. Uh, the other way to customize it and I don't know if the, this is exactly what uh, was meant when the question was asked, but next to each part, there are options. And you can create part options, which allow you to further customize the choices that are uh, attached to that part. And I'll just say drop down list because I can't think of a good, but I can do a drop down list 
on a as a part option. And I put this on Adam's class. I did a drop down of ABC. And so if I go and I'm just jumping in and adding in a prescription in the interest of working fast, and I grabbed one from another lab. So let me go get my uh, in house lab prescription. I'm going to search Adams. Here's my Adams clasp. And under part options, you see Adams class. It's in green because it's got additional options that can be selected. Now, some parts, and you probably have seen this, some parts we've already added some system part options. So that's why you're seeing double the Adams. That's a system option. But you can add additional options to your parts to customize. Uh, it's important to know that the options depend on the lab that is selected. For example, I edited the custom part or Adams class for the in-house lab. If I send an Adams class to the W Ortho lab, I could get a different list of customization. So if you want them to customize something, you need to reach out to them. But that allows you to customize uh, naming of the parts and then some part options. Now, the second half of that <clears throat> is how they appear in the favorites list. And I think right now they appear in the order that they were added to the favorites list. I don't think we try to organize them in a particular order. So um, I think they go in Let's just see here. I will put a. Um, I'm just going to search uh, full contours of Kernia crown, and I'm going to make that a favorite. And then I'm going to go over to favorites. Let's see where that goes. Yeah, and that just shows at the bottom. So if you want your favorites list in a particular order, it's not a great answer, but the answer would be unfavorite everything and then favorite in the order that you want them to show in the list. Okay, to continue this, perhaps how to use EZRX most efficiently, uh, I wanna show a couple things. Um, just to help you with setup. So I'm gonna go up to account settings and this is available to um, all subscription plans. A couple of things you can do. One, I'm gonna to go to account options and some things that you wanna uh, make sure to look at and are probably checked on your system. Uh, show template list. Uh, so when you're looking at a prescription, you can see the list of the template template or templates added to the prescription. If this is unchecked, you'll just see the parts that make up the template. You won't see the name of the template. So make that uh, make sure that's checked is a, is a suggestion. Uh, by default, all customers get our one page prescription form. Uh, we do have a wizard style prescription form. And real quickly, let me jump in and just show you what that looks like. So if you don't like the one page prescription form, most people do. Um, but it looks like you create the prescription, then you go to a second page where you get a lot of the information that you fill out on the one page prescription form and then you click submit prescription. So if you like more of a wizard style um, prescription form, you can turn off the one page prescription form by default it is checked. Um, if you don't want to show the standard price if your lab is entering their standard price. If you don't want to show that, say you often show the EZRX screen to your patients and you don't want to see that to see the pricing information, you can check that. Let me log in over here. And with the hide standard price selected, 
the price shows like this. And if you need to see the price, you hit the little drop down to show the price if the lab is entering the price or if you've entered the price uh, if you have an in-house lab. So with this checked, this little area is hidden by default. Um, we have these options where patient name and birth date are read only. You could enable this, say if you're using Cloud9 and you only want the information from your practice management system to update names and date of births and EZRX. Um, this is a newer feature we added maybe three months ago, the needs review feature. So if you have a practice, uh, especially we see this in larger practices and school environments where you don't want every staff person to be able to submit a case. You want them to be able to create the case and then submit it and then have someone review it. You can enable the needs review feature. And when that is enabled, you get this menu option uh, on your dashboard. And so these are the cases that someone needs to go through and look at and actually submit. Um, this goes with when you enable the needs review feature, you need to go through and set up the proper security rights on each user if you want to use this. We do have a knowledge base on this, so I don't want to get too deep into it on this call, but just so you know, we do have a needs review feature. Um, it's actually been very well received at some of our, you know, a number of our practices and our, some of our school installs. Uh, show date of birth on print view, pretty obvious. Uh, most everyone, you know, U.S., Canada, most, you know, has our month, month, day, day, year, year, year format. We do support a different date format. Um, we do support three different tooth numbering systems in EZRX. And if you are a practice that has multi-specialty, you can have a practice default, which is universal. I'll set my practice default as Palmer, but each doctor then can have their default. So I can go up and edit doctors. And let's say that uh, Tom prefers to use universal while um, my other three docs prefer Palmer, which is our default. Then when Tom creates a prescription, the tooth numbering system is gonna show in universal format. So if you do have orthodontists and dentists, and they want a diff different tooth numbering system, whatever, pediatrics, uh, you can have a practice default and then each doctor can have a default. Okay, and then uh, we do support multiple languages now. We released this a few months ago. You know, the default is English, but if you do have a need for another language, we can help you get that going. I prefer EZRX in Spanish. It's that easy to switch it over to Espanol. Okay, and then maybe a second half. So that's sort of a, some options you can take a look at. Um, maybe to get an EZRX set up, you know, a little bit more efficiently. Another option um, or something we thought of, and again, you may be doing this now, but is to build favorite views inside of EZRX. So by default, the default view on the dashboard is last 90 days for the submitted date, all offices, all doctors, all labs, you know, everything. And let's say that you're a multi-doctor, multi-office. So I'm going to say, I want to see my Woodstock cases, and I prefer this month. And then I like this view. This is something that I want to uh, have quick access to. I can save this view as a favorite view. Maybe Woodstock submitted this month. 
And then now I can say Woodstock submitted this month from my drop down. And I've now created a favorite uh, view of just those cases. And so we have lots, you know, you can have as many views as you care to have. And it's that easy to flip between them. And then if you want to change the default to say Woodstock submitted this month, I can set that as my default. And that's going to become a uh, my default view whenever I log in to EZRF. And favorite views are available on different the different uh, panels on the left. So there's a favorite tab. Um, no, I'm sorry, they show on the favorites. We also show them on the in-house dashboard. You can have favorite views. And if you're using the EZRX aligner tracking system, they show here also. So favorite views are really a great way to make it easy for you to filter the cases that you need to look at, you know, quickly during the day. Now, let me hop over in the chat. I see a question. Okay, now it's posted. It. Okay, um, Alex, you have anything on how to use EZRX more efficiently? No, no, in, in that uh, chat, you know, just let us know if that keeps happening. Um, Todd, they're asking about the file coming into the build platform with the teeth facing down. And oh, okay. heard that that can depend on the scanner, but we might be able to help them figure out how it's to always get the teeth facing down. It's a little bit of the scanner and it's a little bit of the um, 3D printer software and us having to adjust how we um, pass the file to that software. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just let us know about that if that keeps happening after, um, you know, you're always gonna wanna make sure you put the second orient point up between the interiors. Um, and back to, you know, staying organized in EZRX, a lot of people really like using tags and a combination of tags and favorites should let you make, you know, whatever views um, you, you want to make. So I tarot is back to that scanner thing. Um, I tarot is the scanner that they're having this with. So if the scans are coming in through our integration, you know, we behind the scenes do what some of you might have done before exporting from align tech or my tarot where it should be set to have the teeth facing up um, but again we can we can just help you figure out um, what might be going on there if you want to give us a call and schedule something there's a question about how to add the name to the model and great question I'll go through uh, how to do that in just oh yeah a couple of minutes um, we generally usually get a couple of questions on 3d I did want to just go over tags real quick. As Alex said, <clears throat> tags are for, you know, custom workflows, custom reminders, something that EZRX just doesn't track by default. And you can create tags. <clears throat> um, you can have 99 tags. Um, it'd be pretty crazy if you used all 99, but you can have 99 different tags. Uh, I don't think there's a limit to the number of tags you can put on a prescription. Probably the day-to-day -day use is three or four or five. Uh, it's kind of an interesting interface to get to where you create or edit tags. You scroll down to the tag script and then down at the bottom is where you can create or edit your tags. And so if you create a tag, um, do this now. Um, you can pick the color and you can add all kinds of great colors. I'm going to use thistle and I'm going to create that tag. And not only can you apply tags to, to prescriptions and you do that from here, 
and you can say do this now you can put tags on your templates and so i'm going to go up to account settings and i'm sorry i just go to templates and i'm just going to edit an existing uh, template in the interest of time so whenever you create a template or edit a template you can add tags to that template and so whenever i create a prescription using the template bands tester then the tag do this now is added to that prescription. And then you've got the tag on the prescription and then you can create views of all of your, I'm gonna do, I don't know when that case that I edited was, um, I think it was saved actually. But you can create, you can filter by tags, and then you can save as a favorite. Some people will load templates up with a bunch of tags to kind of outline the workflow. I don't know if you wanted to go to that extent with it. Um, and then if you view the prescription, you can remove tags from a case that's already been submitted, or if it's a condition where you wanted to add the tag, you know, after it had been submitted, like they just called back and they're gonna come back sooner than we thought, can we rush this, something like that. Yeah. Um, you could change the date needed and then you could add a tag for that so that it's really pops right up on the list um, with that little visual. Yeah. So this particular prescription has three tags, needs printing, aligner treatment plan, and print it. And maybe you complete the aligner treatment plan, uh, go over to tag, and just remove that. So instead of removing and then adding, if it's a workflow step, what Alex is saying is put all, all the tags needed for this particular template. And then as each step is completed, remove that tag. It's a little faster than deleting and adding the next step. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you really personalize any flow that you want to set up for different yeah. appliances. Okay. Um, well, why don't I jump into um, 3D? See if I got some scans here that I can work with. One of these is going to have a Well, I can't win. I need to. I need to set that as my default. Wow. There's one on the print list. Good idea. All right, so let's walk through our 3D product. So the request was just how do you put the name on the model for printing? And so um, this is EasyRx 3D for those that haven't seen it. So this is our software to prepare a model for, for 3D printing. The workflow is very simple. You kind of work top to bottom on the right panel. So I'm going to orient this model. You always orient first if you're going to trim the model or if you're using our bracket removal software. And then I'm going to trim this model. We've got a couple ways to do that. I'm going to use easy model trim. Hold down the shift key on the keyboard, left mouse button, and I'm just drawing around the model. 
to set the trim path. Adjust those. And then I'm going to go trim this model. This will take just a couple of seconds. And then I'm going to go through and I'll add a hollow base, thinnest base height, two and a half millimeter wall thickness. And I'm going to click add base. While this is trimming, we recently added more drain hole options for those out there that are using 3D and you know, like uh, to add more drain holes if they're printing hollow models and want to drain the resin out. And in just a moment, we're going to get to the last step, which is add label. So you cannot add a label until you've trimmed and based the model. So that's why that menu option is currently hidden. And once it finishes basing this model, it's going to open up the add a label panel. Then we can go put the name on the side of the model. So there's our horseshoe hollow model. And you'll know now, notice now that the top two panels have collapsed. And now there's add label. And you've got some choices. The default is just the name of the patient. But we have some other options. So if you want to put the external ID, you can do that. Each model can have two labels. And you can concatenate a label or uh, option. So I'll put patient name, external ID. I'm going to do a uh, regular font size. I'm going to emboss that. Engraved is you know, carved in. Emboss is raised. And then I'm going to position the first label. And you go to where you want the label to start. And you click. And then you go to where you want it to, the direction you want it to go. We must not have Phil Carlino's external ID in there, the reason it didn't show. And then you can adjust where it is positioned. And then maybe I'm going to go to the other side. And I'm going to do custom text to show you that. And I'm going to position the second label right here. And do something like that. And then, so the first step is to define what you want as the label and then position the label. So I position two labels. You're not finished until you click add label. So you have to add the label before it actually adds it to the model. And this will take a little bit of time. Yeah, if you don't hit add label and save it when it's still blue like that, it won't be there when you go to it print. It won't be there. We'll let me move it. So there is label on the left and right side. Now, some other options is so you can see. I'm going to pick uh, auto as the font size. And I'm going to put patient name. I'm going to position the label. And so the request we had was we want to be able to control the size of the uh, font size. We came up with this concept of custom. And so I, I'm going to delete that and I'm going to get rid of that custom text. Oh. I don't want that. So let's do auto again, position it. Oh, if I make this, if I drag that endpoint out, you can see the text is getting a little larger. So you do have flexibility to control the size of the label. You have regular large, which looks a little like this. That's pretty good size. 
Again, you're not finished until you click Add Label. Okay, what... Um, and there is the label ad. Looks like that. All right, what... Um, Alex, do you have any uh, anything? Any questions out there? I can't think of anything. Um, so that surface you put the label on doesn't have to be completely flat, but if it goes through a raised surface, you know, it kind of buffs out some letters. Um, maybe, is that why we're doing that change where it's like that raised flattened surface? Maybe yeah, I think so. Give it a better chance to show up. Um, yeah. And yeah, they're, from what I've heard, they're really good about catching, you know, the light, so they, they should be pretty easy to read. Um, so maybe I'll give regular a try first, you know, but then you can move up to large. Um, some, if you're doing aligners, some people put the aligner number right on the tooth and that doesn't seem to affect anything. Um, so, so you can really put the label anywhere you want, as long as what it looks like now is, you know, legible and that that's how it should print out. But, um, no, I can't think of, of anything else. Right. Well, we've gone through all of the questions. So we're going to open it up for any, uh, any questions out in the viewing audience. Yeah, we had a, a chat going on um, between someone and I. So y'all can't see it, but it's um, they're asking, what happens if I go to do something in EZR accident? doesn't respond. Um, so this is a perfect example. If you go to add a label and it doesn't show their name, check back to the prescription side of things, you know, that tab up there to the left, um, just to make sure that EZRX didn't log you out. So you go back, yeah, and, and refresh the page. Um, what can sometimes happen because of HIPAA, and um, I think your browser can contribute to this too, is if EZRX logs you out because of inactivity, then it can have trouble figuring out what that patient's name is to put the label on there, um, have trouble saving it. So, um, you know, you don't want to do the edit, step away, come back, and then not be able to save it. Um, so yeah. I would just check for that. Yeah. And then, and then if you go back into the editor, give it another try. If you do get stuck on a spinning wheel ever because of something like this, I've seen it shake it loose if you click um, add base again or add label again. You know, it'll kind of go through that previous step and then get to a point where you can reattempt the save. And, you know, again, if you're logged into EZRX, then it should know where to save it to. Yeah, but anything else, um, you know, write us a chat or you should be able to unmute yourself in Zoom. You have to move your mouse to see the little microphone down in the bottom left if you're on full screen. And we'll be emailing this recording out. Um, it just takes a little bit of time because we have to doctor it up a little bit, but we should email this off to everybody who was on this participant list. Yep. All right, well, <clears throat> we thank you for joining. If there are no other questions out there. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining. We really appreciate it. We do this every Thursday of the month, so we will do it again next month. So if you think of something else to ask, let's join again next month. All right. Take care, y'all. Everyone have a good rest of the day. Thank you.